Then in part B, calculate the direct material variances for the biscuit division in as much detail as possible. And this is for 10 marks. All right, so you'll remember from our lecture on standard costing, I told you I don't want you to memorize formulas. I want you to understand the logic behind calculating these variances. So what you need to do first is quickly write out the framework that I've provided you with, and you're going to pull the formulas from that framework. However, guys, you need to do that really quickly because there's only 10 marks available over here, and there are a lot of calculations that we need to perform for those 10 marks. So you need to do this really quickly. Remember, the logic is we always start with actual information. So we start with the actual price multiplied by the actual quantity. Then we change one thing at a time. So we are going to change the price and we keep the quantity exactly the same. If we only change the price and we keep the quantity the same, that is going to give us the material price variance. Then, if we keep the price the same and we change the quantity, that is going to give us a usage variance. The price stays the same, we just change the quantity. We compare the actual quantity to the standard quantity and that gives you a usage variance. However, the required did specifically ask that you calculate these variances in as much detail as possible. And if you go back to the information provided in the scenario, we know that the biscuit division uses two different types of raw material. They use cookie dough and they also use chocolate chips. And you know from our lecture on standard costing, if a company uses more than one type of material and the one can be substituted for the other, so in other words, if they use less cookie dough, they can use more chocolate chips. Or if they use more cookie dough, they'll use less chocolate chips. If the one raw material can be used as a substitute for the other, then it's possible to split the usage variance into a mixed variance and a yield variance. Now obviously this won't always work. Let's say for example we have a company that manufactures cars and each car needs a steering wheel and they also need a front bumper. Then you can't say, instead of having a front bumper, I'm going to have two steering wheels. Or instead of a steering wheel, I'm going to have two front bumpers. That doesn't make any sense. You can only split the usage variance into a mix and a yield variance when the one raw material can be used as a substitute for the other. So in other words, if they use a little bit more of the one, they'll use a little bit less of the other. And that applies in this scenario. So, we are not going to calculate the usage variance in total because the required specifically asks us to calculate the variances in as much detail as possible. So we are going to split the usage variance into a mix and a yield variance, which means we are going to repeat what we have above. And if we are trying to calculate a mix variance, the only difference between these two things over here should be the mix. Everything else should be exactly the same. So what we are going to do is we are going to compare the actual quantity in the actual mix to the actual quantity in the standard mix. And if the only thing that changes is the mix, that will give us a mix variance. Then lastly, we keep the price the same and we change the quantity and that is going to give us the material yield variance. Then just a few other important things to note over here. Remember guys, the sum of the mix and the yield variance is going to give you the usage variance. And these variances are always calculated using the actual quantity of raw material issued or used in production. So if you go back to the information provided in the scenario, you'll see there's a difference between the quantity purchased and the quantity used or issued into production. For cookie dough, they purchased 420,000 kilograms and they issued 405,600 kilograms into production. 
For chocolate chips, they purchased 380,000 kilograms and they issued 374,400 kilograms into production. So what I'm explaining over here now is the actual quantity that you have over here in all of your formulas. What actual quantity are you using over there? Is it, is it the actual quantity that is purchased or is it the actual quantity that is used or issued into production? And for the usage variances, so for the mix and the yield variance, it's always based on the quantity issued into production or the quantity used in production. On the other hand, for the material price variance, you don't have one rule that you can use. It depends on the information provided in the scenario. It depends on how raw material inventory is valued. In this scenario, inventory is valued at standard cost. So raw material inventory is valued at standard cost. And if raw material inventory is valued at standard cost, then the price variance is calculated based on the actual quantity purchased. and not the quantity used or issued into production. On the other hand, guys, if raw material inventory is valued at actual cost instead of standard cost, then the actual quantity will be the quantity used or issued in production, and, or issued into production, sorry, and not the actual quantity purchased. Now, if you have no clue what I'm talking about over here, guys, you don't know the principles, you don't know the theory, you need to go back to the theory, okay? I'm not explaining that in more detail over here. You need to know that from our lecture. This is covered in the lecture. So if this is news to you, you don't know the theory, you shouldn't be doing tutorial questions yet, you need to go back to the theory. And then finally, please remember that this standard quantity over here is always flexed to actual production. Alright, let's start with our calculations. First, we're going to calculate the material price variance. And you pull the formula from above. You don't need to rewrite the formula, guys. You do already have all of your formulas now above following the logical approach. I'm just going to include it for completeness sake, but you don't need to write it out again over here. Alright, and we obviously need to perform this calculation for both types of raw material, for the cookie dough and for the chocolate chips. First, we need the actual price multiplied by the actual quantity, and it's the actual quantity purchased, not the actual quantity issued into production. So if we go to the actual results for cookie dough, 420,000 kilograms were purchased for 60.9 million rand. So over there you've been given the actual price multiplied by the actual quantity. For chocolate chips, 380,000 kilograms of chocolate chips were purchased for 202 rand per kilogram. So there's your actual quantity and that is your actual price. Then we need the standard price. And please remember guys, we are working with kilograms over here. The quantities that we are working with is in kilograms. So the price that we are working with must also be the price per kilogram. This 202 rand over here is the price per kilogram multiplied by the number of kilograms. So we want the standard price per kilogram. Don't make the mistake of taking the standard cost per unit. That's incorrect. We want the standard price per kilogram. So for cookie dough, it's 150 rand per kilogram, and for chocolate chips, it's 200 rand per kilogram.
and we need to multiply that by the actual quantity purchased, not the actual quantity issued into production. So for cookie dough, they actually purchased 420,000 kilograms, and for chocolate chips, they actually purchased 380,000 kilograms. Alright, so for cookie dough, you can see we have a variance here of 2.1 million rand. And this variance is going to be favorable because the actual price is less than the standard price. And for the chocolate chips, this variance over here is going to be unfavorable because the actual price per kilogram is more than the standard price per kilogram. So this is going to give us a variance of 760,000 Rand, unfavorable. Then guys, you don't know what the mark plan is going to look like. Sometimes there are marks allocated for calculating the variance in total. Sometimes there are not marks allocated for calculating the variance in total. So obviously, if you're short for time, you can probably leave this out. But if you have the time, rather just show the total variance, just in case there is a mark for that on the suggested solution. Then next we need to calculate the material mix variance. And remember the formula just comes from the framework above. Alright, so first we need the standard price, and remember that's the standard price per kilogram. So the standard price per kilogram for cookie dough is 150 Rand, and for chocolate chips it's 200 Rand. We then need to multiply that by the actual quantity in the actual mix. And remember guys, this is the actual quantity that is issued into production, not the actual quantity purchased. So the actual quantity issued into production for cookie dough is 405,600 kilograms, and the actual quantity issued into production for chocolate chips is 374,400 kilograms. That is the actual quantity issued into production, and that is the actual quantity in the actual mix. That's what they actually used. All right, then the price stays the same because we are trying to calculate the mix variance. So the only thing that changes is the mix. So the price is still 150 Rand per kilogram for cookie dough and 200 Rand per kilogram for the chocolate chips. Now we are going to need to perform a separate calculation in order to get the actual quantity in the standard mix. All right, so first let's calculate the actual quantity in total. So the actual quantity for cookie dough plus the actual quantity for chocolate chips. Just calculate the actual quantity in total. Okay, 
So the actual quantity is 780,000 kilograms. Now what we need to do is we need to take that actual quantity and we need to put it into the standard mix. So we need to know what the standard mix is. So in other words, according to the standard, how should the material be used? So if we go back to the information provided above over here, this is where your standard mix is going to come from. For each unit that is produced, they should input 1.5 kilograms of cookie dough and one kilogram of chocolate chips into the production process. That is your standard mix. So let's just calculate what that is as a percentage. And remember, you must show all of your calculations. So the calculation that we performed on the question paper, you need to bring forward over here. You can't just leave that on the question paper. Okay, so this gives us a total of 2.5 kilograms. So in order to calculate the mix, for cookie dough we say 1.5 kilograms divided by 2.5 kilograms, which is going to give me 60%. And for the chocolate chips, 1 kilogram divided by 2.5 kilograms is going to give me 40%. So what does this tell me? According to the standard, for all of the raw material that is input into the production process, 60% should be cookie dough and 40% should be chocolate chips. That is the standard mix. So now we are going to take this actual quantity and put it into the standard mix. actually input 780,000 kilograms into the production process. 60% of what they input should be cookie dough. And 40% of what they input should be chocolate chips. So according to the standard, they should have input 468,000 kilograms of cookie dough and 312,000 kilograms of chocolate chips. That is the actual quantity, because it's based on the actual quantity over here. You've taken the actual quantity and you've put it into the standard mix. And you'll see if you add these together over here, you come back to the same actual quantity, obviously. Because it's the actual quantity, you've just put it into the standard mix. So we can now include that over here in our calculation. And we can calculate these variances. All right, so for cookie dough, they should have input 468,000 kilograms into production. They actually input less than what they should have. So if they actually used less than what they should have, this variance is going to be favorable. For the chocolate chips, this is what they should have input into production according to the standard. They should have input 312,000 kilograms. They actually input more than what they should have, so this variance is going to be unfavorable. Once again, we don't know what the mark plan is going to look like, so if you have time, calculate this variance in total. 